And now this is part two for it had to be you. And we begin with B, where essentially a lot of the same stuff that occurred in part A occurs here, except now we have some rhythm. So it's a written out swing with longer duration note, shorter duration note. And uh, let's get my piano working. But the harmonies are basically like in the beginning. So I'm going to sit all the way to the left as far as I can. Shape this first harmony. And, um, well, the arpeggiated pattern versus the block chord pattern, that's just a detail, but the shape of the hand is exactly the same. And instead of playing lilt and of course now I also have the pedal so here's the F sharp and the fifth finger I have a sl slightly lazy way to tie the top D into the next measure by the way what measure is this ah 28 and so I will release the pedal into measure 28, keeping the third finger down on D, thus kind of having a smoother harmony change. Okay, And right away move the hand to a new position, which similar to what we had before, would have the thumb on B natural, right, c c coming up in measure 29, Right now the long fingers are F sharp, G, G sharp. Still keeping my thumb pretty much inside the keyboard. Don't quite have my second finger in the right place, but that doesn't matter. It's really on that final G sharp, and I'll try to show these things. Whoops. Right, that's where I need to really reposition my hand. So instead of being here, I need to do this particular move. And now in measure 29, that's perhaps where the new stuff begins uh, and contrasts itself with the uh, A section, because now I really have to arpeggiate quite a bit down using the pedal to sustain that G sharp uh, melody note and that's why you see that unfinished tie which is showing that the note is sounding without being held right and in the meantime I've brought my thumb out from being inside the keyboard to right there on the edge because I think that's helpful for what's about to happen so here we have the fourth finger playing that E and as I do it I completely let go of the G sharp so that I can do that swing right so from over here this position I have this new position and so I'm going to use my uh, symbols to indicate all that as I play the E I want to do this. Now my thumb is just on the very edge of the bottom E. I'm not trying to over <laughs> uh, deviate my hand or anything like that. Just get the, the thumb right there on the edge of the, that bottom E while the rest of the fingers find their notes. Now do I need to look at the hand? No, not really. There's that yellow highlighted G sharp. My thumb is already on B. Why is it already on B? Well, if I go back to 27, let's say I'm still inside the keyboard here, because at 28, 
my second finger is right there on that B, isn't it? So it's kind of easy for me to bring the thumb over to where my second finger is because I don't need to look to actually check that my repositioning is taking place. And of course, I had my fifth finger on F sharp. Well, I'm just putting the third finger on F sharp. So a lot of shared keys, which makes it quite easy to find the new position by feel. Now, three is an F sharp. I know that that's G right here with the finger four. That's G sharp with finger five. I don't need to look. So all of these notes and 28 are ready. And finally, when I get to the yellow highlight and I need to now swap my uh, long finger notes like that, I go from being over here to being over here. It's the same thing for me. It's kind of easy uh, to find that E natural with, with finger four, simply because I know that if this is my F sharp, where my finger three currently is, well, then that gap is E F, right? So I'm just gonna bring my finger four into that gap and find the E right next to that D sharp. So it's kind of possible to do, and I would strongly encourage you not to check with your eyes, if at all possible. I just make that move. The thumb is still on B, like we had it already set in the beginning of 28. And so then we continue. And that fourth swing. You might find that putting the B on the downbeat of 28 over here is already helping you to make this swing a little easier. Because if you are way deep inside like this, you know, you just have to slide way out as you <laughs> play that fourth finger, the, the green highlight. But if you're already on the edge with finger one here, your finger four is a little closer to where it needs to be later. So that kind of position for the downbeat of 29. And as you play the green highlight, that's what you do. Right, and then you're in position for almost the rest of the whole measure. Now here, I'm going to highlight yet again. Let's do a cyan or whatever that color is. Right, there's that green highlight. And now the cyan highlight coming up, I'm playing that D with three. Yeah, and I'm going to have to very quickly put my thumb right underneath that D as I play it. So another quick position mark, just like that. Right, so you see what's happening, that's a transitional position with thumb under, or long fingers over the thumb, whatever you want to call it. And I'm ready to play the final E, and of course as I do it, let's do another highlight, so many colors here, some kind of tan, I'm going to I have to do this. So this is where my long fingers, three, four, five, oops, wrong markup. Uh, there it is. As soon as I play the, the tan E, the long fingers rest on G sharp, A, B, because that's what's coming up in measure 30. Now, as I do that, as I let go of that E, the tan E with finger one, I obviously want to start thinking ahead. In 31, my thumb will have to play A. So I would say that even before I play the G sharp with finger three, let's put the thumb right here on A. And there it is. All right, and that takes me all the way to the end of measure 30 and downbeat of 31, there is my thumb, right? So the advanced preparation of that single square in measure 30, I think is very useful. Let's review that line uh, starting at B. Now, of course, I could put a little square right there in measure uh, B <laughs> in 27. You can barely see it probably. And I'm not even sure if this uh, 
smaller view of my score is helpful or not so if it's not please leave the, a comment to that effect that it the, the previous larger score was better i'm just trying to kind of play around with the views here right and not only the f sharp of course i also want to move the um second finger to a sharp there but maybe that's a bit of an overkill because these are so obvious you really do want to move those fingers right otherwise how else are you going to play it so sometimes maybe it's not important to to um show every single position shift but just for clarity you know i'm i'm making sure that this is overtly obvious big shift this one i really should put in so that we have no doubts about what what's supposed to happen all right so the uh, position shift you see there held by the pedal all the notes are ringing i am now in position and maybe the better way to do it is to say hey you know what the long fingers do their thing up here my thumb has to move to B down there and that's the only thing to worry about maybe a better thumb no that's not good Where's the pencil um, so here here it is I don't want to worry about finger two right now it's not going to play until later so just the thumb and the long fingers three four five Right, so that takes me through 28 and then of course I must make sure to bring uh, one two three and four in line right there with that highlight right and so this moment that's not good enough because you see my thumb will not reach so I really need to slide four out and do this deviation with my hand, right? And that's that green highlight that you see there. Now the cyan highlight with thumb under and then tan highlight with other fingers. But then as I let go of the E, there is that other adjustment, position adjustment. takes us through to 31 so quite a few specific details to take care of if you want to sound smooth as you go through 27 28 29 30 one more time So in real time, all the things I was having to do in 31 new challenges and um, again, some finger options. I like them both for different reasons. So I'm obviously making them available here as well. If you choose the upper fingers, well, it kind of requires more of a stretch. So here with the upper fingers you actually would need to go back to the last note of 30, 30 and make sure to do this adjustment right so the long fingers two and three have to go on e and c sharp if you can do that stretch it presents certain advantages but there is also a disadvantage and i'll explain it in a second but that it takes care of the first half of measure 31 very nicely if you can do that kind of big five note chord stretch. Now, the other option is measure 31, you keep two on E, right? Because when you position uh, in measure 30, the thumb on A, your two is going to naturally rest on E natural. So, 31. What The only thing you'll then have to do is a big move in. So if I were to notate it, I would need to use that arrow one more time. 
as you play the A, and maybe even before that, let me, let me correct it, as you come into playing the A, right, that fifth finger slides in, now the, th the thumb plays sideways inside the key on that A, finger two still on E, and then what you do is you just bring the th first finger over to C sharp like that. So it's very important to be inside for that reason. All right, you bring the hand back in, play the A with the thumb, finger two is on E, and as you do it, finger one jumps over to C sharp. Now the advantage of this thing is that you can keep the fourth finger anchored on A and never have to worry about moving the fourth finger. Right, so you see how 31 and 32 are very, very similar. Um, not unlike what we were dealing with in the beginning, in the A section, in, in this parallel spot. Um, but yeah, so there you go, two options, either the top fingers, if you prefer, then just white out the bottom ones or go for the bottom ones, in which case you have to do some sliding. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Sometimes you have to slide. On that stretch you don't have to slide, so really there is a bit of a trade-off in each solution to this fingering challenge. All right, 33. Let's get to 33. You play the A with the thumb and immediately big shift. Now we talked, I discussed this sort of not looking down when making big position jumps. Uh, when uh, presenting the tutorial for Etude B N F M number six, because it was all about these kinds of jumps. So you can always review that video for more information, but essentially same thing as there. Once you play the A instantly, this has to happen, right? So that box you see, hopefully you can see it, shows that that jump occurs. And how do you know that you jumped correctly? Well, you know that the thumb is on A, and you know that right below it is G. Without looking down, you just trust your fifth finger to locate itself right below your reference point. Yeah? There it is. And as you do it, five is on G. The second finger very easily finds the C sharp because it's just the right distance from that G. Well, if the second finger finds the C sharp, yeah, that kind of nice black key reference, the thumb almost automatically goes on A, third finger is right around that D sharp hump right there on E, so try to do that. Right. First you focus on getting that fifth finger on G, then feel that C sharp with two, then recognize that you're pushing the third finger into D sharp, therefore it's right above E, and the thumb, it's not going to want to be here, it's too close, it's still too close here. It's going to feel too stretched out here. So right there, nice comfortable uh, position. Takes care of uh, three-fourths of this measure 33. But then here a similar jump occurs. I'll highlight it in, well let's do another yellow. No, that's wrong highlight, G. So on that G hits the reverse just like A is right here, G is below, so you're finding it without looking with finger five. Now we're going to play five on that yellow highlight. Uh, shall I remove my... Ah, well, you, you know, the, the, the yellow highlight that I'm talking about right now, not the one above. Um, here it is. G with finger five means that A is right above it, and I'm going to put one right there without looking. And, you know, if you feel a bit uncomfortable at first, just do it a couple of times. Focus on that five. Here it is. G. Five, the A that we need is right above it. First, you can just move the fifth finger. Okay, there it is. I know where it is. Now, instead of moving the fifth finger, move the thumb. There it is. Do it a couple of times so that you really do feel that 
distance. And a very similar thing uh, has to occur where you need to find the other notes blind. And now from this position to this position, if I don't stretch out the other fingers, I'll end up in the same chord. And that would not help me because I need to put the second finger actually on that E. Well, let's see how that works. There's the yellow highlight coming up. So I find the A first, but then very quickly what I do is my uh, second finger looks for that D sharp, right? That cliff that I fall over. So it's a bit of a stretch, but not too wide. So it's a stretch that feels wide enough to recognize that this is the D sharp and therefore that's the E. Well, if that's the E, then I can find other notes in a similar way. For instance, I feel a G sharp with finger three. I don't need to look down. That would be too awkward, right? I'm kind of squeezing two and three together. That way three would be on F sharp. No, let it rest naturally, let it spread out naturally and it instantly falls onto G sharp. Um, and that means that the fourth finger will be right there on A. Well, if the fourth finger is on A, B would be covered by five, right? So in that completely, sets me up to play the rest of this line. So let me go ahead and add the necessary position changes. This position will go right there in between. And it's pretty wide, so let me make sure it's big enough. Uh, one more time. I think I should use that pencil. Where, where is it? Yeah. All right, sounds good. So we have that jump. We got the right spread. Then first time, first time repeat measure. As you play the five, you bring your hand over like that, covering A and B with three and four. So I'll show you, mm, let's do another green highlight, shall we? So on that green highlight here, quick and easy, oh, pencil. Um, there it is. So with that red box, you're basically being told, come on, do this, F three and four. And then as you play three, instantly, let's get that fifth finger in place. There it is. wonder if I can make these a little more bold. Yes, I can't. Oh, yeah, I can. There it is. So let's, let's go with this sort of thick box. I think it'll probably be easier to see. How is that? Too thick now? Might obscure some notes. All right, let's do a middle ground. Anyway, do please comment if you can not see certain things clearly and I'll definitely adjust accordingly. Okay, well, let's go on. Uh, I didn't need to zoom out like that. There. So next two lines and yeah, last two lines of this page. Looking back at uh, 34, the beginning of the first time repeat, where, what's going on with the thumb? Because last time we left it, it was on A. But then on that green highlight, the thumb really should also be brought over. And the way I know it's on D is in a way by being aware of the fact that my two was on E, right? So if you look at that two right here, it kind of gives me that reference for where E is and therefore where D is supposed to be. So right here, right? at the moment where I'm doing the green highlight shift of positions. Not only do I want to be aware of three and four resting on those two notes, in bold like that, they're also the thumb, that lower square, please be aware of the thumb resting on D. And right now you can see it's on the edge I am moved out. So let's say, by the way, see that 31 where the arrow shows to 
pull, uh, push your hand inside the keyboard. If you chose those fingers and did do that, you need to kind of figure out when to pull back out. So let's say you're doing this. I would do it right away. So I would do it maybe as you're playing the G right here. So that would be an ideal spot to pull the hand back out uh, or kind of move it to the edge of the white keys. Stay on the edges on that yellow highlight. You know, find those long fingers and all that. Then as you're coming up on the green highlight, you're already on the edge. You're pu putting the thumb on, on the D. You're also going to put four and three. Sorry, that green highlight right here, finger five. Four and three on A and B. And then as you play the three, that <laughs> final position adjustment in, in that measure. You know, trying to... I'm not even so worried about the fifth finger being right on top of D, but it has to point toward it. Okay, finally. Measure 35, we're in good position, and we do exactly the same thing as we did in measure 33. Instant jump. Instant jump in a very similar fashion. You know where D is, so use it as a reference point and just move the fifth finger right next to it and then find the other fingers blind, don't look. Just like that, that kind of shape, that chord in measure 33, same shape, same type of a chord in measure 35. One black key there gives you a good reference different rhythm though you'll see that I'm tying some notes to just for a variety really and, but that's a same thing use that tied note as a way to move to a really interesting position that's what it looks like let's use my brackets that will pretty much cover yeah all the way from here to here this bracket shows quite clearly what notes you need to prepare and that's what I'm going to expect you to do right here. Yep, so that box shows to prepare those bracketed notes. One is on D. Right, how do we put one on D? We know that five is on C, right? So it's all easy next to five. Don't look down, just feel that reference point. Five is on C, it doesn't have to play, but I'm going to put the one right next to that C. Right, as soon as you hit that A, let, let me, I guess, do more coloring, that cyan highlight, jump, just jump. Ooh, wrong jump, because one is on D, but where should two be? right here, right next to it. I'll highlight why. Uh, there it is. Indigo color highlights where the two has to be. Right, and that takes us in, right into 37, very easy. Thumb, I don't even need to show position adjustment because quite frankly, you know, it's so easy to move the thumb to E. Uh, and so then same, same exact thing happens. Right, big jump with the reference on E, moving the fifth finger to D nearby. And again, more syncopation changes of rhythm for variety's sake, just so it's always something new. Same thing, get us right back there on oh gosh let, let me move this yellow highlight one more time oh, oh tan we can do tan highlight on that uh, a tan highlight we'll do a jump but where do we jump let's figure it out right here 
a little bit hard to notate because the bracket takes care of all these notes but not that note I'm about to show you which you probably already guessed so that moment is not included that B will not be part of that position because one is on D right so I'm looking at bracketed notes E is uh, oh sorry two is on E then four there is on G right and then that B you don't have a finger for it because you're going to be playing it with one but right now one is not on it one is on D I'm looking at basically where the brown smudge is right that's where I'm trying to prepare my fingers and I'm looking at the notes under the uh, bracket that follows the brown smudge three is on F sharp five is on A just a regular D major position yeah but so as we prepare it a very easy preparation in a way because before the brown smudge five is on D so we know to put the first finger right there where five is boom and then once we found the one again don't look down I guess you can just to make sure you found it correctly but try to get away from looking down as quickly as possible that brown smudge put that one there on D right where five is and then find the, the rest of the notes right afterwards okay so here we go put in the big box right on the brown brown smudge how is that for a technical term but right away as we play the E in downbeat of measure what uh, 38 we are now in the perfect position for the rest of that measure and we play finger four and we play the B four again three four five now we need to be ready to play that A you can prepare it right away as soon as you play that F sharp why not right okay let me now highlight with yellow right on that yellow please play the, the place this thumb on A natural now as you play that final A you could try to do this trick I wouldn't do it on G yet I would wait till that A right and that allows me to quite comfortably place two and three on the notes that are coming up that'll be the green smudge so and with that please do that All right so before before you launch into measure 39 recognize this position just a regular A major chord yeah and so as soon as you play that bottom A uh, what smudge shall it be now Ooh, running out of colors okay no smudges or else we'll confuse ourselves that's what I'm trying to do yeah there it is and again as soon as we hit that last A oh I can use the green smudge again because <laughs> it's the exact same kind of situation uh let's see right there okay so we get into measure 40 finally right. let's review measure 35 through 39 so here we go 35 big jump don't look down just feel that reference point d I screwed up because on that cyan colored smudge I did not move I was I was not consciously thinking of where finger 5 is it's on C so one more time here is my 5 on C I'm about to play the cyan smudge 
And I know that finger 5 is on C, therefore there's finger 1. I found it without looking, but before I play it, let's get the other fingers in place. There they are. Ooh, that, that's later. First, it's that. Mm. Lots of funny position changes aren't there, so let's, let's work on it. First position change. Now about to play the cyan smudge. Very unusual position change, so let's just do that. I'm going to play, I'm actually going to hold the cyan smudge A natural with finger 3, be aware of that finger 5 on C and then just practice. Well, I, accidentally I played finger 5 on C, I shouldn't have played it. I should have just moved, but got overexcited. Okay, so here I'm holding that A, cyan, and about to move. There, that was better. Notice, I'm not looking down. Here, cyan is being held down. There, now that feels better. And now I can play the rest of it. Now you might have noticed that as soon as I played the indigo smudge, I moved my thumb under finger 2, over on top of finger of E natural. Same thing in measure 37, boom. Let's find it. Did I find it? No, I missed. So one more time, E, I'm aware of where my thumb is. There it is. Now I found it. Tan colored smudge coming up. Now I know it has to be D major position I'm jumping to. And there is my five right there on D. And I, I found it right away because I thought about it. See, thinking helps. Measure, what's it, 38. And as soon as I play that downbeat E, boom. Get that thumb down there. All right, so a couple of adjustments of the fingers as I play through 38. Let's not rush through it. There it is, yellow highlight, and then green light highlight coming up. There it is. Now, no highlight box coming up. Put it back like this. Last green highlight. Same thing as before. Except I'm playing different uh, notes in a different order, but same position. Measure 40. Now here's the tricky thing. I have to bend my thumb underneath as I play that C sharp. Now I'm, um, let's see, can I highlight? Okay, this last line's highlight. It's yellow highlight on the last line. Bend that one right underneath the fingers and get ready to play the E. As you do it, big jump. Prepare all those notes. Let me put a bracket over them. Yeah, so there it is. And then as you play that final chord, or not a chord, an interval, get the thumb to go back to D. And the same thing, we need to do the jump. <laughs> now, I like to put my, even though I'm never going to play that fifth finger, I like to put it on D. And so let me uh, go ahead and put the box in here. I like to put on that box my fifth finger on D because it's so easy to feel this shape. D major chord. Now here, as I play through the, that arpeggiated D major, let's bring the hand inside the keyboard yet again. Something like that. All right, so move it in. So that the thumb can very easily find the E flat and the rest of the fingers are in position for 
that uh, E flat German sixth chord as it's known. All right, so that obviously takes us to the end of this uh, first time repeat. And here again, I have two fingering options. You can either go with three, if you can find it comfortably. Yeah, just move from five on C, three right next to it, and then you're set. Or maybe put one onto D and then find the four next to it on E, put the three also on D so that you can then go, you know, you flick out the thumb to get ready for the repeat. But I personally think if you have enough courage that third finger is a better choice. Because now you can shape the whole position right away. It's a bit of a challenging sh shift, kind of diagonal inside the keyboard. But once you're here, you're set. Okay, and then of course we go back to the beginning of B. We get to measure, what is it, 33 again. And now we do this jump after the yellow highlight, right before the um, first time repeat measure. Now we play the two and I forgot to put the second time measure in this edition, this revision. But of course the second time measure begins right where that first time measure's bracket line ends. So it's the last uh, measure on the page here. We're kind of playing the fifth finger on B. Uh, maybe I'll put finger five there just to avoid confusion. So we're playing that B with five. And then we play it again and instantly we try to stretch out this one, two chord. Now, if you find it very difficult to stretch it as a one, one, two, you can try one, three. And then you just have to move three right away after you, you hit this five. Let's give it a color. Let's make it cyan. That's the big jump moment, so practice it to make sure you can do it. All right, so that's how you want to shape it before you play three, four, five, or if you use one, two, same thing, put three, four, five on those last three notes of this measure. Okay, now we're done with this page. Uh, and I think I want to do this last page in a separate part as well. It's already 42 minutes. I think we've covered quite a lot of ground on this previous page. So let's leave this page three material for the final video on based on this arrangement. Goodbye.